Hello everybody. Um, I thought today what I'll do is take you through all the stuff that I bought from Japan. Now I did buy a lot of stuff. Initially, I was gonna put it all in this box here. This is basically a soft Famicom sort of a storage box. I love storage cases. However, I bought a lot more than I thought I would. Basically, I bought the disc system as well. Just generally thought that I could do with a bigger box than this one. It is a very nice one though. You can fit in about 10 games here and the Famicom. So uh, pretty good, but this will be up for sale at some point. But what I got was this thing. I, I couldn't turn it down when I saw it. This here is a Famicom and Famicom Disk System box. So I thought I'd have to pick this up. I got it from a nice guy in Japan. I think actually it's from Sapporo where we went and it's quite weird to buy something in the UK from Sapporo, get it transferred over and it appears to here from a place you already were and you can just go on there and pick it up yourself. But in any case, it's here and uh, I'll take it out of this bin. It actually comes with a cardboard sleeve, which is even more cool. And it's in pristine condition too. So again, I couldn't turn this thing up. Let's open it up here. And <laughs> here basically is my trip to Japan. Now you probably remember some of this stuff that I got. Um, if you watched the previous vlogs, obviously, I won't sort of go back to them because uh, um, I just want to do this straight up. But um, there's a Legend of Zelda strategy guide now i can't read these whatsoever but they're fun a fun nice little thing to keep um this here was a bag that i bought from the really nice lady called yoshi who is in sapporo at the uh Ferrano guest house i thought i'd get one of these to put sort of the cartridges in haven't put those in yet but i think i'll probably do that or put something else in there um and then we got the this book here this was when i was actually in uh sapporo and uh, this guy gave me this book called Humans Were Created Scientifically. It's an anime, like a sort of a, like a little sort of illustrated novel, I guess. But uh, I need to get around to reading that. It looks quite funny or maybe it's true. Who knows? And then I've, I've, I'm very sentimental when it comes to Japan. So I kept my flight, my boarding pass here to remember the trip. Um, also, you may remember this from my little travels towards the end of Japan when I was uh, in Tokyo, I managed to find one of these trains. Now the thing with these trains, here I'll give you a closer look. The thing with these trains is I thought um, it was a dream. I thought these didn't exist. I thought I dreamt it. Turns out I didn't. I managed to pick one up from a store in uh, Nakano Broadway and uh, really, really pleased with that. Uh, I also got uh, these cards. Now I don't know the name of this card game, but when I was in Japan last year, I picked up the red version. This is the black version. I kind of kicked myself that I didn't get the black version, but I won't take them out because it's just a ball late to uh, put them all back in. But basically they're really, really nicely illustrated cards. If you're ever in Super Potato, I strongly recommend picking them up. They're not too cheap. They're about 5,000 yen for a set, but they're so cool. Trust me, they're so cool. So in there, we've got the, uh, the Famicom uh, with the disc system adapter. Um, that's a really nice bit of kit. I won't bore you showing you that. You know what it is. And here, this is a bit more in, in, in tune basically with my personality. I covered it in stickers. I wanted to make this Famicom mine. So I went to a place in, I think it was near Shibuya in which I got all these stickers. Now the stickers in Japan, they're fairly pricey actually because these stickers were all made by artists and I thought I have to do that, I have to get some of these stickers. So I basically bought a load of stickers. You've got Tamagotchi stickers there. You've got like um, Ferrano stickers for when I was in Ferrano. I've got like, um, like all the train tickets there that I used on a daily basis, all that sort of stuff. I just wanted to sort of like have my Famicom that reminded me of being in Japan. And I suppose covering it in stickers of places you've been makes it all that more meaningful. Now, if you open this up, this is where the batteries go. Not in this case. <laughs> in this case, it's loads of receipts. And I really hope it's here, what I hope is here. Yes, it is. Oh, it's broken though. No, it's not, it's not. It's a shell that I found on the beach when I was with my friend Joe. I'm gonna keep that forever. Um, I'm quite a fan of collecting stones and whatnot because um, these have been around for God knows how long, and it somehow was in Japan floating around for beyond my whole life, and now it's in my hands, and I find that amazing. This here is a stone. Uh, this was on the JR line track as we crossed the railway road. So like, as I crossed over the railway road, I was like, I want a stone from the train track from the, um, 
from the JR line. So I got that. And a bit more obscure, I got a baby that's all squishy. This was from a vending machine. Joe bought this for me. He said, you have to have one. So uh, that is a squishy baby. And uh, I have a bit, sort of strange thoughts about that one. I'm not really sure what to think of it. Um, I keep all the receipts and that sort of stuff. Um, just because like, I like to look back upon receipts of where you've been, who you've met, you know, you might have like some notes that were written down that someone might have translated for me. Just little bits that you found scrunched up in your pocket after a day's walking around Japan. And then you come back and go, oh, I might keep that. That's a nice little reminder. So that is that. Now let's move on to the game side of things. So I got a lot of games. Let's see if I can actually get these out. Robocop 2. Um, I actually thought this was Robocop 1. I missed the two. Um, I had Robocop as a kid. Um, I never had Robocop 2, but I thought this was Robocop 1, so I bought it and then realized it was Robocop 2. It's one of those kind of like very quick buys. I was in, this is actually from that uh, store called Friends with a really nice, nice old uh, mama son there. And I just had to buy something. Whenever I go there, I feel like I have to buy something to support the store. Um, and I just really, really want to come back. When I come back to Japan, that is the store I still want to see going. When we left on the last day, unfortunately, it was, uh, it was closed. But um, I picked this up. That's the last game, I, one of the last games I bought. Um, this one here is Sweet Home. This one cost me 5,000 yen. It was not cheap whatsoever. But as an iconic game of Japan, uh, a Japan-only release uh, that I can't play because it's Japanese, but I'm slowly learning Japanese, um, it's a good game to have. It's really, really cool. I love the artwork on the front. Really, really interesting. Um, we got Rockman Free. Rockman Free, gotta get Rockman Free. And then we got Rockman 5. And then we got Rockman, the original Rockman. And then we've got Rockman 4. So basically you can see where this is going. We got all the Rockman games, Rockman 2 and Rockman, what was that, 6? Blimey. So yes, um, we got Fist of the North Star. Um, wasn't very good, but it's Fist of the North Star, a staple of Japanese culture. Um, I had to get it. And what is this? Godzilla. I mean, a staple of Japanese culture, the big boy, I had to get it. And last but not least, I have no idea what this is. One day I get around to playing it, don't know what it is. Just a family of vampiric creatures. Look forward to playing that one. Um, in here, I don't know if you can see too well, but in here, the disc system slips. Um, remember I bought those discs um, when I was really jet lagged and probably shouldn't have done? Um, I got those and I basically put all Basically, all receipts, train tickets, places I've been, you know, the monkey temple ticket. I got everything from our trip in here. This basically, this box is my entire trip of Japan. And I'm very happy to have it, basically. When I feel like I really want to get my Japanese fix, I can open this box back up, look upon it and go, yeah, that was a really, really good time. So what next I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the box games that I got from Japan. So the first game I'm going to show you is The Legend of Kaji. I think it's Kaji or is it Cage? I don't know. Um, another reason I need to learn Japanese, but I think it's Kaji. Um, this is basically the first game that I bought when I went to Japan for the first time back in 2014. I sold it for some reason. I had to get it back, but this time I got it boxed and it's a really kind of it this game holds a lot of nostalgia for me because whenever i boot it up it has that bit where your young girl is kidnapped and you go after him as a ninja taking out other ninjas and uh, it just takes me back to that first time so that's a legend of kaji 1986 it's an early early game but um a really good one now this is a game i grew up with uh this is shadowgate and when I played this on the uh, on the Famicom, it had actually, actually all the saves, the save states. So I uh, played a game that was from God knows how long ago, from a young Japanese lad or whoever uh, playing this game. And uh, I actually played their save file again, which was actually really quite cool because um, it's nice being able to sort of like reload these saves that haven't been played for for so long. So Shadowgate, a game from my childhood, I had to pick it up in Japanese form and I love the artwork, check it out. Um, the big dog, Mario Brothers 1. Um, 
I, I love the artwork for this one. There's actually a storage case you can get for the Famicom, which is basically a lunchbox of this on it. It looks like a giant cartridge. But again, the artwork and the Japanese artwork is just amazing for these games. It's so much more interesting than what we had um, in the UK, because um, all we had in the UK was like a black box with a pixelated Mary on the front. This is like a really, really nice intricate drawing there. And um, I don't know, I'm really, really fond of this. I'm really, really glad I got it. And you know, it's the first game. It's the game I, f pretty much the first video game I ever played. And uh, when I was in Japan, I completed this as well. So uh, excellent. Then we have Top Gun. If you remember when I was in Sapporo, um, and also in Gunma, I was trying to complete this game. I will not complete it, it's pretty much impossible to complete this game. But like, uh, I was trying to land the plane. Now, I didn't do a very good job of doing that, um, but it was fun nonetheless. And I suppose one day in the future we might come back to this. I was trying to research how you land the plane in this, but I couldn't get around to it. Now this one, I was really pleased to get. This is one of the main games I wanted to get from Japan. Mother, Mother. This game, um, I didn't really know much about because I was playing Mother 2. But um, it's very similar to the Super Nintendo version, which I'm more accustomed to. But um, I started playing it on the plane and uh, I got as far as taking out a lampshade. So you pretty much know where I am, I'm right at the very beginning. But I'm gonna play more of this. I feel like um, I've actually bought a tent and I want to do some camping, some solo camping on my own. And uh, this is actually on the Switch. I can play this on the Switch Nintendo thing. So I'm going to actually give this a go when I'm going out, go out camping. I'll see how far we can get. But um, I love the title. I love the fact that uh, it's kind of like, is it not embossed? It's kind of like, a, it's like relief. It comes out a little bit. So I, I really like that. And I kept the, the uh, trader sticker on, excuse me, the, the trader sticker on there. This was. 137,000 yen, no, sorry, uh, 13,700 yen, uh, which is probably about 70 pounds, maybe a bit more. Um, some of you may recoil at me doing that, spending that much money on Mother, but like at the end of the day, I had the money to do this. I saved up and I saved up. And when you go abroad, I don't know how you feel about this, but when you go abroad, the money you have suddenly turns into monopoly money. It doesn't feel real. You just hand over money and go, actually, that was actually quite a lot of money I just gave over then. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh, well, we're on holiday. That's how I feel. So mother, I got it. I wanted it. I really, really wanted it. I gave them money. They gave it to me and I went home happy. Now, this one, I'm so stoked about getting. I didn't even know it existed. The people of Japan didn't even know it existed. When I went to Sapporo, the really lovely lady Yoshi there was like, I didn't even know that existed. Is that a DVD? And I was like, no, it's the Famicom game of Akira. Now, this is amazing. It comes in a plastic case um, and it's just, let me open this. Ugh. It comes in a little plastic case and it's really weird because there's nowhere for the cartridge to really sit. It just like floats around in there. Um, but it's just, I don't know, I, I didn't know there was a game of Akira. And for me, I think this is basically just kind of like a slideshow of the film, but you have to interact with it a little bit. Um, but it's an amazing thing to have. And just look at it. It's just Akira, you know, a staple of Japanese culture. Gotta have it. Now, Mary Brothers Free. This is something that I didn't buy on my trip. I bought this uh, the first time I went to Japan on, in 2014. Yeah, March 2014. So 10 years ago, I would, be, I would have been there now. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's Mario Brothers 3. This is the game I bought from Japan 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, what else can I say about Mario Brothers 3? You know, you know Mario Brothers 3, the best game of all time. Not much to say about that, but there is something to say about this. This cost me 30,000 yen. Again, some of you are coiling, re recoiling hearing me say that, um, but it's one of my favorite games of all time. And that is Kabuki Quantum Fighter. And there's actually changes to this version uh, than, the, uh, than the NES version I've got, which I was really surprised about because I've been playing this game for 30 years, 32 years I think I've been playing this game for, never completed it. Really, really, really came close to completing it when I was in Sapporo one night. Uh, was actually gutted I didn't because that would have been an amazing moment. However, I came so close that it pretty much was complete. Um, yeah, this game cost me 30,000 30, yen. Uh, 30,700 30, 30, yen. 
that's a fair bit of cash. Again, some of you may not like that, but uh, this game to me is just uh, so iconic that uh, I had to have it. The next game, I bought this from a soccer when I was there. Um, a soccer super potato was actually really quite good. It had a lot more sort of rarer stuff there than I thought they'd have. Um, I would say it's better than Yaki Gabara Branch, but um, I love them both. It's DuckTales 2. Now, DuckTales 2 is a very hard game to find. I was initially going to get this on the PAL version. So glad I didn't, um, because uh, it's, they're pretty much exactly the same, just this one's a bit smaller. <laughs> and on Famicom. I didn't really notice any changes at all um, in this game from the from the, the one I'm accustomed to. But um, it's DuckTales 2, and I've wanted this for ages. And uh, I love at the end, you fight the D2000, which is like a liquid metal version of a duck. Uh, it's when Super, uh, Terminator 2 came out. And look at down there. I don't know if you can see this, but there's like a Mickey Mouse logo there that someone's stuck on for some reason. This is one of the things of Japan that I like when you buy a video game. Uh, sometimes the games come with little things, stickers and, People have written stuff down in the back of the manuals and stuff like that. And I just love all that sort of stuff. Um, this is Faxanadu, if I got the pronunciation that right. Um, a game I grew up from my childhood. It's not in my collection. Um, so I thought I'd get the this one from Japan. Um, it's a sort of a role play, not a role playing game, but it's kind of like a lot like Zelda 2. Um, to be honest, it's not one of my favorite games of all time, but it's one from my childhood. And when I boot it up, you get that Russian nostalgia. So um, I have to get it. And here we have Super Mario Bros. USA, Super Mario Bros. 2, the fake Super Mario Bros. 2, who cares what you call it. Not going to go into the backstory of this because I'll be like every other person on YouTube talking about it. Um, you know the deal. Uh, but yeah, very, very uh, cool game. Um, I got it on All Stars and I, do have a, I don't have actually a copy of Mario Bros. 2 in my collection. So glad I picked this one up and uh, I love the story behind it. If you don't know the story, check it out. Um, we got here a Super Mario Bros. 2, the real Super Mario Bros. 2 book. Now this book I just find amazing. It's got like this really cool sticker of a naked man on the front there. <laughs> um, haven't opened it. It was 3,608 yen. Um, I consider that an absolute bargain because these books are so old and they're so well preserved that um, I had to have it. And I can't speak Japanese, but I'm learning. Eventually I'll decipher all of this and be able to complete Super Mario Bros. 2 with absolute ease. And we have Super Mario Bros. 1 book. Now I was reading this when I was on the uh, the JR line back home and I just love it. I mean, I've got a Mario Bros. 3 one from when I was actually the first trip I did to Japan, but I just love it. I love, I love these books. I just love the illustrations. I love kind of like how in depth they go about how to complete the game. You know, stuff that we never even knew about, like how to complete the game. You know, it shows you like the, the hundred lives trick. It shows you all these different steps and how to complete the game. I mean, look how thick it is. Good stuff. So one thing on the last part of my trip, I decided I need to become a father. So I got a Tamagotchi. This Tamagotchi, uh, basically uh, I made him survive, I think until the second day after I got home. And unfortunately he passed away on the second day of me back, back in the UK. He must not like it here very much, but um, it was good fun. It was good fun. And he's actually still going inside there. Um, but he's just an egg at the moment. He's been reborn, but he hasn't hatched. But I just love Tamagotchis. It's a real blast from, from the past to have it. I got my wife one as well. And also my friend Joe, I bought him one too. So we're like the uh, Tamagotchi trio. And uh, from what I know, my friend's uh, Tamagotchi, he's still alive, hopefully. So at the end of my trip, I thought, right, I've done enough game collecting now. I don't really need anything else. But then I came across these, these two cassette tapes. And I was thinking, what can I, f what could I fill these with if I get them? And then I thought, well, I only want one of them. So I decided I want like this one because there's a little bit of writing on this. And I thought that tells a story, that's pretty cool. But then I saw this one and I was like, well, that's got Mario on it. And it's sort of a bit more cool, but I was really tight. And, and also it's black as well. I kind of prefer the color, it's a bit more slick. And I just thought, well, why don't I just get both of them? So I got both of them. And then I made it my last adventure to go around Japan hunting for games to fill these with. Now I wanted to be strategic. I wanted to get games that I really, really liked. I wanted games that I maybe haven't actually played before. So the games I decided to go for were this one, 
Now, I think this is Gargoyles Quest 2. It's the third one of the... Oh, it can't be, actually. It's a sequel. So I think it was uh, Ghouls and Ghosts. Then it was Super Ghouls and Ghosts. And then this was the third one I heard someone say in... But I don't, it can't be the third one because it's the sequel. So maybe this is the second one. I don't know. But basically, if you can help me in the comments with that one, let me work out what this is, that'd be appreciated. But yeah, I got that. And that was one of the last games I got, but not before this one. This one is Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Now, I've never owned this game at all. Um, I've heard it's unbelievably difficult to complete. But uh, one day, I'll give it a go and die because I'm terrible with video games but yes that was the last game I got um really really pleased with all the things I purchased from Japan actually um I will we are planning to go back again maybe next year <laughs> which would be funny and I think kind of like the way I do it basically is the uh, the first year I went in 2014 I bought a Famicom I really want to buy a Famicom I want to get something that's from Japan you know the original so I got a Famicom but then for some reason a few years later, I sold it. I sold it with all the games I picked up, which is really ridiculous. And then when I went to Japan last year, I thought, right, I'm gonna get a Super Famicom. So I got a Super Famicom with all these different games and that sort of stuff. And then after that, uh, this year, I was like, right, I'm gonna get the Famicom back. So I went to get the Famicom, got it back, but got all the games that I sold for some reason, and then got more games on for that too. So really, really happy of this. I think for now, what I'll be doing on this channel is I'll be doing more vlog type stuff, I think. I'm gonna be doing this animation, but that's a work in progress and I wanna really take my time with it. So in the meantime, what I'm thinking of doing is doing going back to the vlogs, the adventures, because I really, really wanna be adventurous this summer. And I've bought a tent, so at some point I'm gonna get out here and do a bit of wild camping and maybe go out on my bike and do some bike adventures, some game hunting and stuff like that in the UK. Who knows? If you've got any ideas or things that I could possibly do adventurous wise, let me know. But until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.